Welcome back, everyone, to another Aroma Press podcast. We hope you are doing well. Very quickly, before we jump into it all, a thank you to our newest patron over at Patreon, Murat Bekdash. Murat, thank you for your support. And, of course, to all of our other wonderful patrons who make this possible, if you would like to join, patreon.com slash Roma Press, and then at IS Roma Press. For the video version and on social media, you all know that by now. I feel like sometimes I'm wasting my breath by saying it, but you got to have a consistent opening because uh, everyone else does. So we're, we are just going to follow suit. Uh, before we get into everything, I, I want to, Andy, just very quickly apologize for my... When we got into the thing about the coefficient, I explained it so poorly and I got what I thought I was saying did not come out of my mouth. And I confused a lot of people why I made it seem like I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about either, which yeah, you did get at some, one point or another are true. Um, I don't even want to get back into the weeds of it because what I was trying to relay was that the association coefficient, which establishes five years of results. I, I was trying to explain how it relates to the current year one, but I made it seem as if the one that depends on the champions league is the association one. I'm just going to leave it there. We're not going to talk about it today, but I just wanted to apologize. If I confused you on it because of my poor explanation, I apologize. Um, what I won't apologize for, though, Andy, is uh, uh, saying a few weeks ago, I said very explicitly uh, something uh, in relation to uh, Roma being jealous in a way uh, in the in the manner in which they have been able to ink out the results under Daniele De Rossi. And I said, you know, I've grown jealous over the years because Juventus have had an absolute knack for doing this, where they don't play great. You could even say they were the worst of the two teams, but they still managed to get the results. Well, uh, tonight was the Allegri special. It, I, I mean, we want to talk about Corto Muso. Corto Muso, it's not just a bizarre saying that Allegri, if you, I'm sure there have to be dozens of clips on it on YouTube explaining exactly what it means. Um, Corto Muso is not just a weird phrase said by this uh, uh, guy from Livorno who coaches up in uh, Torino. It, it It is a way of life, okay? This was taken straight from the home of Max Allegri, this performance, and, and copied so brilliantly and so perfectly that it, it almost felt as if I had some, like there was some sort of kindred spirit between De Rossi and Allegri tonight as Roma, they win one to nothing over Sassuolo. A fantastic goal from Lorenzo Pellegrini is all it takes. You brought this up, I think last week, either one or two weeks ago. Has anybody had their stock, had their quality, had their performances turn around in such a dramatic fashion in the exact same... I have never seen anything like this. Usually what we see is when somebody struggles uh, earlier in the season, middle of the season. Very rarely do you see them in the latter part of the, of the season turn it around. Well, uh, Lorenzo Pellegrini has done that. I am still shocked. Pellegrini and Paredes. I, I am, and oddly enough, Paredes is the one who does the assist today to Pellegrini. It is shocking to me. I, I undersold when I said Roma have a functional midfield now. You would not be mistaken if you were to say that the maybe the most effective department of Roma right now is the midfield. I, I, It is astonishing to me. In the same season, we can have an entire department of a squad go from useless to the the standout, shining zero, yeah, zero part goals, of the team. Zero assists, yeah, zero goals, zero assists. All of a sudden, look at Pellegrini. Man, yes. it almost feels like with the momentum he's gained, it almost feels like he's going to close in on, on, on double figures, basically. I mean, mm. I, I mean, we're talking about... Well, we're, and, we're, well we're, he's we're, doing this thing now, too, where, you know, he's getting these goals in, like, opportune moments, which, I mean, that aside, but 
uh, to see him go from one uh, one end of the spectrum to the other in, in yeah. again in such a short time span it, it's it's astonishing to me we can try and find reasons for it again it, it, it will somehow divulge into some discussion of Jose Mourinho which I obviously don't want to do I don't have a strength for that again but I, I mean I, I think we have to start there because this guy looked lost okay eight weeks ago he looked lost now uh, i mean uh, this was uh, i think you said his best season since you're one of jose Mourinho, and, and this is without question the best he has played since then yeah absolutely absolutely this is the this is uh pellegrini at uh at his very best at pellegrini back to doing what he does he just said in his post-match interview all I needed was to feel free in the middle of the pitch, you know, um, mm. to play without restraint, to play with uh, with basically carte blanche from the coach. I think because as a captain, again, Pellegrini is a player that when he's doing well, he's the kind of player he's, or at least he's grown into the kind of player that can pull the team with him. He can drag yes. the team out of a difficult spot. Today, he does it, you know, because... Um, because the match was going one way, I think, in the second half, and he managed to give Roma that chance, that one glimpse, that one opportunity, that moment, that key moment that ultimately uh, made the difference tonight as Roma win 1-0 against Sassuolo. A Sassuolo team that I feel was much tougher uh, thanks to Ballardini and thanks to this, basically, I mean, this coach that specializes in exploiting the desperation of the teams that yeah. he coaches whenever he is called upon to save somebody from relegation. It's um, incredible the knack he has for that, man. Yes. I, I mean, I knew it was going to be, and we even warned people, and I, I that was the last comment I said it was before be tough. Uh, the previous gonna, episode. Uh, it, it, it always gonna. is with this guy. Always. Yeah, he's a specialist. And, 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 and that's why um, it was not going to be a walk in the park. It never was going to be a walk in the park. But that's why to have somebody like Pellegrini is so important to to not make him feel useless. You cannot, mm. with a player like Pellegrini, you cannot shift the attention from him to somebody else and completely cut him off from the rest of the team. As in, yeah, you're not seeing the side of goal. You're not seeing the frame of goal. You're not being put in a position to, to assist others. Because that's more, more or less what Pellegrini was doing for the past year and yes. a half. He was boxing out. He was being run over. He'd get injured every week. It seemed like um, there was no end to to this terrible stretch of games for him tonight and for the past two months, because it's been two months exactly that uh, Daniele De Rossi yes. has been the coach of Roma. Pellegrini is back to being the focal point for the Giallo Rossi. And Daniele De Rossi shows at least, well, tonight uh, Dybala was not there. But even with, when Dybala is out there, Daniele De Rossi has shown that you can have both. It's not like if Paolo Dybala performs, Pellegrini cannot perform. Pellegrini is a player that is good, actually very good now, um, not a superstar, but can he, he? He is functional with others. It's not like you. Uh, the 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 recipe for a disaster is taking somebody like Pellegrini, who, mind you, is also the captain, the the creative force of the team, and basically put him in putting him in a cage, uh, telling yes. him, "Listen, now you just focus on the physical part. Um, try to intercept. Try to tackle." Uh, that's not what Pellegrini can do. That sure, but that's not what drives him. And right now we see a Pellegrini that is driven, that is fearless, that knows what the mission is today. The mission was win at all costs, especially since Atalanta and Fiorentina were going to face off against each other, obviously now with Joe Baron in, in the hospital. Yes. Uh, that match was uh, was uh, was postponed. But the mission was win at all costs. And, and Pellegrini, as the captain of the team, emerged did what he had to do. Roma were given a fighting chance thanks to him. Well, absolutely. I, I think, too, well, you know what? I, I, let's let it go down this, uh, just very briefly, a path involving Jose Mourinho. We, we talked about it when it originally happened, sort of the, the behind the scenes. There was some discussion of some of the players uh, going to the management, uh, to Friedkin saying, okay, well, you know, we're not enjoying the way we're playing football. 
And I, I think we mentioned it on one of the episodes, but uh, Jose Mourinho, he went to Pellegrini and said, so you, you told freaking that, uh, you know, uh, that I should go, that, I, you know, we're not playing good football under, under my management. Um, now, of course, this isn't confirmed. This is just whispers. Um, but I do find it interesting, though, that sort of the, I won't say the main character, but the one who is sort of isolated or pointed out when it came to the exit of Jose Mourinho. Now, we, we, we do have to say that that is indefinitely coming from people connected to him. Again, two sides to every story. I do find it interesting, though, that uh, Pellegrini, the one who is seemingly, mm -mm, I, I won't say faulted by Jose Mourinho, but certainly, uh, certainly seen as a driving force, perhaps, as one of the reasons as to why he was eventually cast aside and sacked. Don't you find it at least somewhat curious that this is the guy who is, I, I would say, between he and Paredes, you will find no two uh, bigger beneficiaries to the arrival of Daniele Drossi than those two. I, 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 I think those proof, two have been... It's, listen, it's proof that although not perfect, you could always, this was a, always a team that you could work with. In the sense mm. that it may not be the IT, ideal team for any coach. This this is not the the the, the dream team. This is never going to be a dream. <laughs> this is never going right. to be the team that will be remembered in the history books of the club. But there is a big difference between that and being a crappy team that cannot even hang with yes. Bologna or Atalanta, which is what Mourinho said on record. He said that mm. roster-wise, Roma cannot hang with the likes of Bologna, Fiorentina, and Atalanta. Um, and that message was passed on, and that message was clearly echoed in some of the performances that we saw from Roma this season. With Daniele De Rossi, he has always been very vocal about this. I love this team. These players are great um, because, obviously, I mean, the man, as you said, you, you know, you're the first one who spent uh, countless hours watching his spal uh, deliver incredible entertainment on a Saturday night. So you know best what kind of players he had at his disposal then compared to the kind of players that he has at his disposal now. It's uh, For De Rossi, this is a luxury. But what the Rossi it is a luxury, yeah. What he understood coming in here is that nothing's perfect, nothing's done. But uh, there is, there are tools that he can work with here, uh, and it's not as if uh, it's all up to him to come up with a great plan. Because the Rossi again, he's not recreating the Mona Lisa. He's not coming up with <laughs> right. some great sorcery to get Rome out of a slump. He's relying on players who were always meant to make a difference. And Pellegrini was one of them. It, it, but but it feels like Jose Mourinho for the past two years or year and a half um, f had forgotten about it, had forgotten about mm. the importance of somebody like Lorenzo Pellegrini. Well, I would say on beyond that too, the, the thing I find sort of elementary, because as you just said, and I have I previously echoed this sentiment, this guy is not doing something like Pep or anything. He did not come in here and become or or was viewed as this mad evil tactical genius seen uh, seen as the one who can overhaul all of the struggles Roma have had. And, and what I, I, I laugh at about this thing at the midfield because uh uh, I remember right after the defeat to uh, uh, at San Siro, we had three or four people when because after that match we had mentioned the midfield. I think I said it was a black hole. We had two or three people, uh, I think on Twitter, send uh, 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 to the Roma press account. They, they tweeted at us uh, just a picture of Matic. Uh, uh, of Nemanja Matic, uh, so, uh, some uh, uh, 16, yeah, some kind of yeah, as some kind some of sixty nine year old guy is the key to the yeah, to uh, everything. To everything. I, I mean, c come on, um, it, it it was absurd to suggest that that because he left. But, 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 but mind you, but for a while it felt like that. Remember, we even had these discussions like, why is Roma Cassini goals? Because Roger Ibanez left. Why is Roma uh, so weak in the midfield? Because Nemanja Matic is no longer there. 
we held those that, conversations. So that means we, Roma we has driven us to a point where we actually questioned whether a player like Matic, for example, can make such a big difference to the team. Uh, Mourinho was only happy to sort of rely on that as an excuse. And and, mm. and we we lapped it up. We lapped it up. Um, now we are being told by, by De Rossi that, listen, I mean, the tools were already here. I, I came in with minimum experience and I'm trying to put the pieces together, but the pieces are there. The pieces are there. It's just a matter of fitting them in, putting them in, in the right spot and seeing if 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 something if something happens. And right now something's happening. The team is responding. The team is alive. You don't win today if the team is downbeat, if the morale is low. The team is clearly fatigued. The team is tired. The team plays a lot of games in a very short amount of time. And it's only going to get bro, came at the perfect time, man. Yes. Perfect time. Yes. But again, it's you win today because something's changed. And and even something as simple as putting Pellegrini in a position to score and make a difference, that's that's all you need sometimes to 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 compete, to stay competitive. Which Roma were not under Jose Mourinho, unfortunately. Uh, De Rossi nine games, twenty two points. Um, so, do you want to look at Jose Mourinho's record so far this season with <laughs> these exact players? Oh man, 29, you are 20, asking for 20, us to get abuse. Points. 29 points, 29 points. Jose Mourinho left in mid-January. Roma had 29 points to show for it. I mean, it speaks for itself. Um, you know, the thing I find most interesting, because, again, it is not as if De Rossi came in, reinvented the wheel here. Uh, I, I think quite the opposite. I think m many of the things he has done are quite elementary are quite um, common sense i mean to see and palladis is a guy who even though i criticized him for 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 years i criticized him um because i thought he was very he was not a very versatile midfielder and i don't think he, he would ever be mistaken for such um but i can tell you without question the one thing he actually can do really well is if you just you you just plop him down in front of the fence. Don't ask much of him in terms of work rate, but just say, hey, when you have the ball at your feet, can can you pick out pick out some passes perhaps? Uh Pellegrini, kind of the same thing. Um you know, uh with under Jose Mourinho, we need you to be very mm -mm, disciplined tactically. I mean, Andy, the, th the thing I find most interesting with uh, Pellegrini, I mean, he is doing this in a mezzalo role, something that I have I have said for years that I, I think is not his best position. In fact, I would say one of his best roles is the one that Jose Mourinho had him in because do we remember We remember a couple of times he was playing right behind Romelu Lukaku alongside uh, Paolo Di Parla. He's scoring more now than he was then. Uh, he's getting more attempts now. Than he was then. He's he's far more effective in the final third now than he was then. Yet uh, technically, he's playing much deeper. Um, but as you said, giving him this sort of free free role, uh, a license to roam sort of role, where we are not going to force you to have many responsibilities from a positioning from a defensive standpoint. Um, it, it it's things like that. It's like, whoa, hold on. We're we're going to find like the 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 one to two strengths of these two guys, and we're going to let them do that. Holy, um, uh, you know, holy shit! Wow, what what a, I can't believe this. And and it has paid dividends for De Rossi because again, I I would say no two players have benefited more than those two. Um. It's difficult to see that in the moment uh, until you see sort of uh, w when you see what it could look like on the opposite end of things when things are going well, obviously. So I, I don't want to use this as a way to to rail against just Mourinho as I do a, a opportunity to praise De Rossi because, again, he did not come in here and uh, uh, reinvent or or uh, discover some new way of playing football. OK, I, I again, I would say most of the things he has done thus far are rather elementary and common sense, but 
my goodness, as you said, this squad is capable of things. Again, I don't think anybody is going to say that it is a, a team worthy of Scudetto, but it it is without question not a team uh, worthy of whatever uh, seventh, eighth, ninth position in the table. I mean, come on, we we have to be serious here. I just find it amazing that it's just these minor things he has done. Yes, he's gone from three at the back to four at the back. But, uh, I mean, how many times did Jose Mourinho do that? He did that plenty of times, too. Um, it is just kind of eye-opening to me how it's not as if we need to blow up the... I mean, if if you would have heard some of the conversations or seen some of the things that people were thinking after that loss at San Siro in the Patriot group chat, I mean, you would have thought, season over, this team sucks. Tear it down. Send Lukaku back uh, to Chelsea. Uh, restart in the summer. We have to change everything. Everything. Burn it down to the ground. Tiago Pinto gone. New everything. Uh, uh, just put a fire to the squad. Burn it down. And then we rebuild fresh and start anew. It's like, okay, well, uh, I understand things were going bad. Nobody is going to deny the first six months of the season were anything other than disaster. But there are some good players here. I, I mean, this isn't a squad completely devoid of quality. I, I, I just think that... And, and the Rost, once again, easiness. reiterated in his post-match, he said uh, this is a team that has to fight for the Champions League. This is a mm. team that is uh, that perhaps is inferior to the likes of Inter, Milan, Juve. Those are yes. the three teams he names. He doesn't name Bologna. He doesn't name Atalanta. He doesn't name Fiorentina. He names Inter, Milan, and Juve. Those are the teams he considers perhaps a step above Roma. But the the obligation is to fight for the Champions League. And and instead, what we got for the first half of the season was almost this this uh, this permeating insecurity, this omnipresent sense of inferiority that mm. prevented you from even competing against the likes of Bologna. I mean, when yeah. Roma went up against Bologna, the Dallara, they got spanked, but they got spanked not because Bologna on that night had some brilliant tactics going on. It was just a matter of attitude. Now, thank God, De Rossi is passing on an attitude of, guys, you're worth it. And we are here for a reason. We're here to win. What he's getting them to do is to to feel competent enough, to feel good enough, to be able to also have nights like tonight where the, the result is a struggle, the match is a struggle, but in the end, the only logical way out of it is by getting the three points. And that's what Roma did. I completely agree. And the thing too... Again, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but a, a couple of weeks ago, I, a couple of supporters of Jose Mourinho on social media did not like some of the things I said. or so, I tweeted something in compliment of De Rossi without even mentioning Jose Mourinho, and somehow that got turned into a slight at Jose Mourinho. Um, I don't know why one, why that automatically has to turn into... A, Praising one person automatically turns into a a, um, a a slight at another. That's but that's a whole other story as to uh, the mindset of some on social media. But the the thing I I f- had some people telling me were were well look at Bologna. There's uh, you know sitting fourth position. Uh, uh, all the teams below tenth in the table. Roma were doing well against. Uh, they were getting results. And I, I was sitting there and I was, I thought that was going mad because I'm thinking to myself, okay, hold on. We're, B- Bologna are having a good season. No, nobody's going to doubt that. But are, ha, ha, have we fallen that far? Has our self esteem gone that low to where now we are saying we should be expected to lose at the Dalara? Come on, let, let's be serious. Or even, um, you know, like Monza. I think somebody responded to me. Well, he got uh, he got the good result against Monza. I'm thinking that's the point we've reached. That we're we're, we're bragging about that. We're 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 completely negating matches against any any team in the top five to seven, and we're going to fixate on the other thirteen that he did well against them again. Uh, not going to even mention what happened in Liguria. Uh, I just. I couldn't believe that it had gotten to that point where I have 
people typing to me with a straight face that, well, you know, it, Bologna, they're doing fantastic. Uh, I mean, they only lost two to zero. And I'm thinking, I, I have entered a new dimension, a different universe. This can't be real. Um, I just, listen, th- th- it is one thing to, as you just said, as to what they're all said. Yeah, Inter, Juve, Milan. Okay, fine. But come on. Atalanta, Lazio, um, uh, Fiorentina. I, I mean, these should be... V- Roma should be expected to win, okay? I, I know they don't have... Uh, I, I know they only have a few Scudetti to their name, to their name but my goodness, um, we can't be so downtrodden and think no. so low of ourselves that we're looking at Bologna as some sort of giant. I mean, come on. Let, let's be serious here. This... We at and least I, have to be starting think, from the same basis. There is, a, there is a there is a difference between saying these things and then passing on a different message in training. But I feel like that sort of got a lo- lost along the way. We're seeing because we're right now we're seeing De Rossi's message to the media being directly linked to the performances on the pitch. The performances on the pitch to me make me believe that De Rossi still keeps it just as real as he does in 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 front of the media. Uh, yes. When he talks to the players, these players are motivated. These players know what to do. These players are confident enough to also be assured that today, exactly, you struggle against Sassuolo. Sassuolo start putting a lot of pressure on you early on in the second half. What you do, you score. And then you know how to suffer. And the suffering is not, does not revolve around uh, letting the opponent dominate you, mind you. That's a big difference. Sassuolo did not dominate you. You manage the result. There is a difference in that. It's something that uh, we, we had done with Mourinho in the past. But with De Rossi, it's we're taking it a step further because it's it's not part of the repertoire. It's not supposed to be this way. De Rossi knows that he wants to express a different kind of football compared to what the one we saw today. But today is a natural step in the journey of a team that is trying to turn things around and remain competitive in the face of uh, increased competition for the Champions League race. Right now, the international break is here. We are in a great position. Um, the schedule that you mentioned on the last episode is terrifying. Yes. Roma have, as as we've seen, and as we've re- repeated ad, ad nauseum, like De Rossi repeats ad nauseum in his post-match comments, is this team is good enough to stay competitive. Why should we run away from that? Why should we consider that, uh, you know, this sort of unspoken truth? It's not. It's it's out there to for everybody to see. It doesn't mean that if you have one of the highest uh, wages um, wage bills in, in the league, that automatically translates onto you being a brilliant team. But it it, it forces you into some obligations, and Roma right now are obligated to win. De Rossi knows this, and thank God the player know know it as well. Well, absolutely. I, I again. It's all, it is all about the balance in your expectations. Uh, I, I think there is a significant gap between, wow, uh, Bologna are doing good. Let's not even count on a result there versus what De Rossi is saying to current day. So taking stock as we sort of enter this period of a break and we see how things are beginning to shape uh, in this final stretch of uh, of the season. So Roma currently uh, fifth in the table, 51 points, Bologna fourth in the table with 54 points, and then Juve 59, Milan 62, and then Inter with 75 points at the top. Uh, Really no reason to go beyond uh, uh, third, fourth, and fifth. Inter clearly the winner uh, of Serie A this season, by far the most consistent side. Uh, did you happen to catch, by the way, Empoli absolutely conceding that banger to Bologna in extra time? Good God, 94th minute. <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Almost as unbelievable, by the way. At some point, we will have to talk about this. Uh, Calafiori. Did you see that coming? Did you see that coming? That's not, notwithstanding his new his new hair. 
because but, that but I there, didn't but see. There, but there, I, I dis, you know, a lot of people take issue with with Mourinho with his decision. But that there, I disagree because uh, Calafiori was not the uh, was not this. First of all, no, uh, it was no. it, they Calafiori needed the money always, too. That's what people forget. Calafiori needed the money, but Calafiori also needed needed a specific growth that he was not going to get at yes. Roma. He did not get at Basel. Uh, at Basel, he still played as a fullback. It's sometimes it's meant to be to go and meet the coach that sort of changes your life. Tiago Mota changed his life. Tiago Mota, out of desperation in an emergency situation way back in October, I believe, just started playing him as a center back. Yes. And uh, correct. And now we got a player who is uh, taking the world by storm and is probably going to go to some big club uh, either this summer or next summer for sure. So, Oh, absolutely. It, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a surprise, but that's that goes to show that there are surprises. It's We can't, you know, like somebody, I, you know, I was thinking recently, I started even to think, well, give all us all back into Daniele De Rossi. Okay. <laughs> Like I'm just gonna put it out there. Just give all us <laughs> back into the Rossi. Watch him cook. You know that's the that's the 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 the, the new uh, word that everybody likes to use. Watch him cook. Watch what Daniele cook with all us back. And once he's back from loan from Japan. Uh, 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 yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I mean, at that point, then you know there is some sort of uh, deity. Working through Daniele De Rossi, I, I, maybe we can say that for the international break. I, I guess to just put a final bow on this entering the international break. So I think it's this is the perfect time because once this break is over, it is f- pedal to the all the way down to the floorboard. You are going to be from now after this break until the end of the season. It is full goal nonstop. You have a incredibly difficult league campaign. You obviously have the tie in the Europa League against Milan. It is going to be every single match is going to be crucial. There are no, there are very. I, I think after this match with Lecce, when they return to uh, when Roma are back in action, let me just double check this to make sure I'm yes. Yeah, so they go away to Lecce, which is not easy anyway because you have to make the trek uh, down south. And then you have the Derby, and then first leg against Milan, and then away to Udinese, second leg to Milan, home to Bologna, away to Napoli, home to Juve, away to Atalanta, home to Genoa, away to Empoli, and then home to Milan. I know everyone kept track of that, but I, I mean, there is even even the away matches against the smaller teams. It is not. There is nothing that can be taken for granted in this last period of the season. These next two months are going to be so incredibly difficult, and it's going to be one of those things where every single match counts. There yes. is there is not one that we can view as a throwaway. There's not win. one. And, and I mean, and it is. Ross, you said it. Just said it. It's every game. You have to win them all. So De Rossi yes. knows. Thank God, because because uh, sometimes we we would hear in the past. Well, it's okay to drop points here. Here, mm. the expectation is win, uh, win because there is no time to lose. Um, I just I, I don't know whether today the decision for for Fiorentina and Atalanta to be postponed, obviously because of what happened to Joe Baron, uh, it benefits uh, Roma or actually could play tricks on them uh, the, with this with the fact that you're nev- you're you're not gonna uh, have uh, Atalanta at their uh, with the, with full games played and these both both teams are are direct opponents. Atalanta are now stuck at forty seven points, so we'll see how that develops. Roma fifty one. Um, but I can only say that this win against Sassuolo puts you in a in, in a position that you would have dreamed. You would have dreamed yes. in this position in January. We had given up. 100%. And right now we are far from giving up. I I couldn't agree more. Again, nobody could have envisioned this. If this was even an option on the table, every single person, you, you would have snatched it out of the person offering it out of their hand. This was has not been foreseen. But the fact you have put yourself in this position, it would hurt even more to see them fumble it. it, would, it I mean, to see them 
make this turnaround and then to just collapse would uh, i mean that it, it, in a way that w- that would hurt even more than them just playing like shit for the remainder of the season because then it would have been expected nobody expected this so that is that's my elementary view on the situation i i just think that's we are no longer in the place where yes, early in the season, okay. Well, you uh, uh, you drew uh, at the last moment to Torino, not that big of a deal. Well, no, we're not in that position anymore. Every single match, every single point matters, and I am glad to see that all seen all that and convey that because uh, this spectacular turnaround will have to be even more spectacular which is is difficult to even envision what that would look like but they have i mean they have to keep pulling off these uh, things akin, uh, uh, akin to a miracle they have to keep doing it uh you've gotten this far which nobody would have expected you might as well see it through uh okay we'll leave it there uh we will be back there's no match we'll be back sometime in the next few days i don't know what we will talk about over the international break i'm sure there will be something um but Never some would have believed some important rumors some, ahead, yes. of, ahead of the summer, probably knowing Italian media what they cook up in the in the in the wonderful tradition of international breaks. Yeah, well, you know, I did. I'm sure many of you saw. If you're not, if you don't, if you don't speak or read Italian, the statement Roma put out on their website about this very bizarre doesn't even begin to cover it. This. This, just look at the club's the latest club statement that they put out. Yeah, you, you will probably have no idea what in the world it's even in relation to if you don't read Italian. Uh, if you're not following the Italian media, uh, you'll you, you'll be thinking what I what does this even mean? These words they're not connected to anything, um, and the statement provides almost no context as, as to what is it in reference to. Maybe we could talk about that if things get particularly sparse. Um, But I don't know. We will come up with something. But we will be back in a few days. Until then, ciao.